This video is a brief introduction to Proton. Proton is a sub-project of Apache Cupid. Proton provides a set of highly embeddable multilingual libraries that speaks MQP. During the course of this video, I will be discussing the design goals behind Proton and how you could make use of Proton to get MQP support. We'll start by looking at the motivation behind Proton. Why did we start this project? When Apache Cupid started, our primary goal was to grow the MQP ecosystem. However, in order to get the MQP experience, you had to use our brokers and our clients or that of another MQP provider. So we wanted to find a way to grow MQP beyond Cupid. Because there are many messaging systems out there. They all have vibrant communities. For example, uh, the Active MQ project. So it'd be great if all these messaging systems could also speak MQP. So we started looking at how we can make this happen. We wanted to come up with an easy path for these messaging systems to be able to speak MQP easily. We decided to provide a highly embeddable library that could be used in a variety of platforms and environments. That's how Proton was conceived. Proton provides you with two options to work with MQP. The first option is the Messenger API which is what most people would be interested in. It's a simple API for sending and receiving messages over MQP. You don't need to know anything about the MQP protocol to use this API. A simple understanding of the basic messaging concepts is all you need. The other option is the MQP protocol engine, which provides full protocol support and allows you a lot of control at the protocol level. In order to work with this option, you need to have a good understanding of the protocol. Now, for most applications, you do not require this level of sophistication and control. For most situations, the Messenger API would be the ideal choice. The engine would be a good choice if you're looking to add protocol support for a messaging server. For example, the ActiveMQ project is using Proton to add MQP support to its broker. Now, let's discuss the design goals behind Proton. From the outset, Proton was designed for maximum embeddability. We wanted Proton to be used in a wide variety of environments. So we made minimal assumptions about the environment in which it will be used. Minimal assumptions about the threading models used by the various applications that will be using Proton. We also kept dependencies to a minimum to ensure there are as few barriers as possible in using Proton. For example, Proton J, which is a Java implementation, has zero dependencies. This is really important in an environment like Android. Proton is designed to scale easily. It can transparently support both peer-to-peer -peer messaging or a complex globally federated network. For example, let's say we have application one and application two. You can use Proton directly to communicate with each other or it could happen we are a globally federated network. From the application's point of view, it will be totally transparent. Another important goal for Proton was multi-language support. We currently have a pure Java and a pure C implementation. We are planning to add a pure JavaScript implementation, which would be great for the web. Between these three main implementations, we hope to cover most of the bases. Another important point to note is that we have a common design across all the language implementations. And all these implementations are driven by a single test suite written in Python. This is to ensure they're all consistent. This naturally leads to a common API across all the languages. This is a key feature because once you're familiar with the API, you could easily use any of the language implementations as they're similar. They have the same concepts and the same semantics. We also make it easy for language bindings. Proton provides Python, Ruby, and PHP bindings over the C implementation using Swig. However, you could easily add your own binding as well, either using Swig or by wrapping the C implementation within the host language. For example, Erlang could load a C library as a driver, so you could use Proton C to build an Erlang client. Proton has good support for data exchange. We provide out-of-the-box support for common data structures like strings, maps, and lists. Let's look at an example to see how this is important. Let's assume we have a Python application and a Java application that is communicating over MQP using Proton. On the Python application, you have a dictionary and you want to send the data across to the Java application. Proton allows you to set the dictionary directly as message content 
and then send the message across the wire to the Java application. When the Java application receives the message, the message content is exposed as a Java util map. If it was a Ruby application, the message content would be exposed as a Ruby map. Let's briefly look at how the protocol engine works. When you feed the engine with an MQP encoded byte string, the engine will generate protocol events that updates the state of the various protocol objects like connections, sessions, links, etc. with the application will be able to see. When the application in turn updates the state of these various protocol objects, the engine will generate an MQP encoded byte stream as output. Your application will be working with the top half of the engine while your IO framework would be working with the bottom half of the engine. Now let's look at the Messenger API. It's a very simple API for sending and receiving messages. The application will primarily be working with the Messenger and the message objects. With a few lines of code, you can easily add MQP support to your application. Let's look at a quick code example. This is an example written in Python. On the sender side, you create a Messenger and you start it. You create a message object, you specify the address, you specify the message content and you simply send it. On the receiver side, you create a messenger object and start it, and then you subscribe to a particular address, and then you can start receiving messages. It's as simple as that. If you have any questions about Proton, I encourage you to submit them through our mailing list. The Cupid community will be very happy to help you get started and answer all your questions. If you need to know more about the MQP protocol, please visit the MQP website. Thank you for your time, and I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions or feedback about the video, please feel free to send me an email.